army was badly mutilated by militants in an encounter close to the line of control in the Machal sector of Kashmir's Kukwara district. Sources have confirmed the militants who attacked 12 posts beheaded the soldier. Indian security agencies suspect the Pakistani-backed militants to be behind this. है जो कि भारत के और देश की मातृभूमि के लिए लड़ते हुए शहीद है उनको श्रद्धांजलि भेंट करता हूं यह जो है पाकिस्तान की जो बर्बरता है क्योंकि पाकिस्तान जितने भी कहना चाहिए कि इंसानियत का जो चीजें हैं उस सभी को भूल चुका है और यह उनका इतिहास रहा है क्योंकि आज वो वही उसी बर्बरता से वो काम कर रहे जो पहले समय में होता है जब लोग जो है सिविलाइज सोसाइटी नहीं थी तो उसी चीज को फॉलो कर रहा है पाकिस्तान जिसके कारण पहले भी लगातार जो हमारे जवानों से वो ऐसा करता है ये बहुत भर्सना योग्य है और वो एक पाकिस्तान एक स्टेट नहीं एक ऑर्गेनाइज स्टेट नहीं एक टेररिस्ट स्टेट है और टेररिस्ट जिस प्रकार से बात करते हैं लोगों की आंखें निकालते हैं उसी प्रकार से एक्ट कर रहा है तो हम ये हमारी लगातार मांग है कि उसको एक टेरिस्ट स्टेट के तौर पर जो है उसका डिक्लेयर करना चाहिए सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक के बाद पाकिस्तान आइसोलेटिव है उसमें बहुत बड़ी डेस्परेशन है पूरे दुनिया में उसके जो है उसकी भर्सना होती है थूथू होता है उसी के कारण जो बखलाहट में ही वो जो सारा कर रहा है उसका भी बहुत नुकसान हो रहा है जब वो एक गोली चलाता है यहां से पूरे फोर्स के साथ उसका जो है उसका जवाब दिया जाता है उनका नुकसान बहुत हो रहा है लेकिन उसको अपने नुकसान की परवाह नहीं है क्योंकि उनको वहां के लोगों की वहां की जो बाकी है चीजें हैं उसका कोई परवाह नहीं है उसका यही है कि टेरिज्म को एक इंस्ट्रूमेंट और वायलेंस को एक इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ डिप्लोमेसी के तौर पर यूज करते हुए और भारत को जो है कमजोर करने की जो कोशिश कर रहा है जो उसकी गलतफहमी है पाकिस्तान टूट जाएगा लेकिन भारत जो है उसको कोई जो है ताकत दुनिया की उसको कमजोर नहीं कर सकती चाहे पाकिस्तान है या कोई और भी है तो इसलिए पाकिस्तान को समझना चाहिए जैसे उन्नीस में भी उसने इस तरीके की जो बातें करते थे आज उन्होंने वहां के ईस्ट बंगाल के लोग जो थे बांग्लादेश जो बना है वहां भी की इसी प्रकार से बलोचिस्तान नॉर्थ ईस्ट कराची में भी गिलगित बाल्तिस्तान में भी जिस प्रकार की है तो आने वाले वक्त में मुझे लगता है कि पाकिस्तान इसी प्रकार की उसकी कार्रवाई रही तो पाकिस्तान को ही नुकसान होने वाला है और पाकिस्तान जो है दुनिया के नक्शे पर रहेगा नहीं रहेगा इसके ऊपर बहुत बड़ा क्वेश्चन मार्क है Pakistan needs to be exposed nationally and internationally. Unless it is disgraced across the globe, Pakistan will continue to do an activity which is forbidden under Geneva Conventions and rules of war. As far as killing of our three people are concerned, the retribution from our side is bound to be so punitive and ought to be so punitive that Pakistan thinks hundreds of times before repeating such a mischief ever again. It is a very shameful and condemnable incident that you mutilate the body of a soldier. As per the world norms and Geneva Convention, this is something which is totally unacceptable. The world all over should take note of it. The United Nations should take note of it that Pakistan has been doing such actions against the soldiers, a uniformed soldier. It is very clearly in the annals of all the books that a soldier's body has to be paid all due respect because he dies fighting for his country. Let's go across to the latest update to Arish Bilal and Srinagar. Arish, uh, two, three developments today, of course, uh, that have shaken uh, the Kashmir Valley. One, of course, is uh, the encounter in which two militants were killed as well as three uh, Indian soldiers at a separate place in the Machal uh, uh, sector and one body badly mutilated. This is a drawn response from the army and uh, nicely plays into really uh, what has been happening around. Well, that's exactly right. The two incidents happening in Kashmir Valley today where the uh, involvement of Pakistan is, was directly established. First, the encounter happening in uh, Hajin of Bandipura district where two Pakistani militants were killed and uh, the uh, fresh currency notes that included 2,000 uh, rupee notes recovered from their position. And also, uh, the, we, are hap we are seeing these, uh, the latest incident happening in the Matsil sector of Kufara where uh, we are told that three army jawans have been killed in a bad action. Remember, bad comprises of the uh, Lashkar-e-Toyba militants and also 
Pakistani Rangers. The Pakistani Rangers provide the expertise to these militants who cross over to this side of LOC and indulge in this, such attacks. We have seen such an attack happening in, on 28th of October when uh, the uh, a soldier of the 17 light infantry was killed in Masjid sector and his body was badly mutilated. And this incident has been reported, repeated in less than a month now. Today we are seeing that the uh, border action team uh, crossing over to this side of LOC in Masjid sector and uh, carrying out an attack on the patrol party. The soldiers, body of one of the soldiers has been badly mutilated. Right now we are told that the army on its part has uh, launched a massive operation in Masjid sector to track down the militants who could be behind this attack. But in such attacks we have normally seen that the, uh, the attackers cross over to other side of LOC very quickly before the uh, army jamans uh, take action, take the uh, retribution action. So uh, this has happened in the past as well in 2013 like we saw in Krishnagati sector where the uh, bat action team crossed over to this side of LSC and beheaded two army soldiers. So uh, the, uh, these war these action, uh, actions have returned to uh, in this sector of Kashmir Valley, particularly in Matsya sector, uh, despite the fact that the LOC and international border has been, uh, has the flare up on the international border and LOC has gone up uh, in uh, Jomo sector as well as in uh, uh, Kashmir division as well. We have seen in the last one year 286 incidents of uh, infiltration baits and ceasefire violations right. have taken Arifin place and, and in, in which we are told to that this, uh, General Raj Kadian is joining us right now. General Kadian, increased spurt in militant activity there, uh, particular depravity shown by uh, those uh, terrorists who uh, beheaded uh, and mutilated one Indian Jawan there as well. This is not going to go down well with the army. The army has said there will be retribution and a heavy one at that. Uh, but this is also uh, uh, fitting in really with the larger narrative. Uh, Rahil Sharif is going out on 29th and uh, desperation follows. Ever since uh, the surgical strike took place on 29th September, ceasefire violations have been almost a daily affair. This is a sign of frustration on the part of Pakistan. India, of course, never initiates a ceasefire, but they always retaliate when Pakistan does so. This is a sign of frustration because after the surgical strike, which was a big black mark on the face of the Pakistani army, they are not in a position to do anything major where uh, it could lead to some kind of a war. They are also not wanting to be seen, to be sitting quiet in the face of this humiliation that they suffered. Uh, both sides are suffering casualties, except that our casualties get known almost by the minute. Pakistan does not allow the media to, to come to the front line. It is not that our army has been sitting quiet. They have been retaliating and very effectively. And they will retaliate to this dastardly act also. Martyrdom is one aspect which, though the loss of life is unfortunate, but martyrdom is part of a soldier's life. But what they have done, and they have done in the past too, is mutilation of our dead bodies of the soldiers. No professional army in the world has ever done it. This is not soldiering. This is cowardly act. Okay. Uh, you know, Raj Kalyan, there is also this political demand now raised by a lot of people today, including one independent RSMP uh, who leans towards the government, that this is... Uh, the right time to uh, declare in, in Parliament and pass a resolution declaring Pakistan a terror state officially. Why hasn't the government really done that? We know the government's views on this uh, keep oscillating, but uh, do you think this is the right time for that? No, I didn't hear RSN Singh's comment, but yes. No, this is Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Okay, no, I understand. Sorry. The, whatever today the national sentiment, one soldier's body getting mutilated raises the uh, the emotional temperature in India very high, and rightly so. So whatever the parliament needs to do, let them uh, do it, but that is not going to solve the problem. The immediate solution lies in a military retaliation. We don't have to repeat a surgical strike. We don't need to cross the border. I've been saying in the past also, we have the means and methods of causing enormous damage on Pakistani posts fitting this side. We destroyed four of their posts only about two weeks back. We should continue to do that on a daily basis, not wait for him to strike first and then only retaliate. The terrain being what it is, this kind of action by the Pakistani, they are, I mean, that border action team is a misnomer. They are Pakistani soldiers. Nobody can come there without the concurrence of the Pakistani army. 
So there is no point chasing those people who they will naturally, they will select a side where they can quickly slip across. But punish the people who are organizing it. The answer lies in Islamabad. Whatever we can do at the economic front, we talked of uh, stopping the river waters. I think we need to examine that uh, seriously because that is the more serious damage we can cause on Pakistan. 42% of their national GDP comes from agriculture, which is dependent on this water. In one season, they will come down on their knees. But the immediate action, we should escalate exchange of artillery fire. That is where... Pakistan is weaker. They will not be able to sustain it for very long. It was for this, this very reason that in 2003, they had sought a ceasefire. The ceasefire came on their request because they were not able to sustain artillery fire. So there should be no holds barred now. But Indian Army should go hell for leather and cause maximum damage on Pakistan. Uh, would you also say that uh, the fact that Rahil Sharif is probably the first uh, Pakistani Army chief to be going out... Uh, uh, on the day he was supposed to go out, really, it hasn't been sooner. He would like to say later, but is he trying these shenanigans also because of that? This is very much a possibility because the surgical strike was a black mark on the Pakistani army. And naturally, he being the chief should bear the responsibility. He will want to leave on the 29th November when he was due to retire uh, to have kind of avenge that humiliation that the Pakistani army suffered under his watch. So what you are saying is very much a possibility that this could be also uh, related to Pakistani army's desire to go with a positive mark. In the interim, you of course mentioned there should be uh, there should be a strike back, of course, and uh, with full force like the one we did last time. The, that Indian soldiers, of course, crossed the LOC at that point and uh, did a, a surgical strike. Uh, would you just say another surgical strike, perhaps, uh, would uh, would would suffice at this point? No, I am not against uh, crossing the LOC. There is no sanctity. If they can violate daily, we can do so also. But everything is a novelty. The surgical strike first time was a novelty. We had astounding success. A repetition may not be that easy. That's what I am saying, that alternative methods of punishing Pakistan without crossing the LOC should be examined, and I'm sure the army would be examining those. All right. Um, we'll, we'll go back to Arish Bilal for a second. Arish, uh, what are the army sources telling us right now? We, we of course, believe that uh, uh, the retaliation, the retribution, like last time, would be at a time of their choosing. Um, but uh, would you say that the army is now gearing up for uh, a period of time where increased militant activity, armed violent activity, could uh, uh, would perhaps multiply just before snowfall, before the mountain passes close? Well, that's right. The troops all along the line of control have been put on maximum alert. We are told that uh, not only in uh, Kashmir division, but also in uh, Jammu, uh, Jammu area, uh, the security forces, particularly the Jamans who, who are guarding the border and the line of control, they have been put on maximum alert. Also, as I uh, said earlier, the army on its part has launched a massive crackdown in Matsil uh, sector because the army uh, sources are telling us that there may be some kind of a follow-up action and there may, uh, may be a repetition of uh, some infiltration bid from the Pakistani side. Because as, I, uh, as we have reported earlier as well, that hundreds of militants are uh, waiting there on the launching pads and this is the favorite season for infiltration to take place because at this time of point, the, uh, when the winter sets in, the uh, uh, infiltration routes get blocked because of the snow. But right now there is no snow. Also there has been no rainfall or snowfall during the last four months. So the rivers that, uh, that flow parallel to the LOC and international border, those rivers are almost running dry. So it becomes very easy for the militants to cross over to this side of LOC. So this is why this is the time when the maximum number of infiltrations take place. As I mentioned earlier as well that this year we have seen 286 infiltration bids and cross ceasefire violations in which 28 people have been killed and 40 of them are said to be soldiers either from the army or from the BSF. So right now, uh, after this muscle strike, the uh, troops all along the LOC have been on maximum alert and on the other side, the army, we are told, has launched a massive uh, combing operation in the Kupfara, entire Kupwara range of the LOC. Uh, we also understand there was an incident in the RS Pura sector, the Ranbir Singh Pura sector in Jammu where a Pakistani intruder, a man believed to be a Pakistani intruder, was shot dead by the BSF there as well. So uh, increase uh, in activity and engagement, I would say, uh, in, on both sides of the Pir Panjal. 
Well, that's right. This is why I mentioned that this is the favorite season for infiltration bids, not only in uh, Kashmir division, but also in Jammu, because uh, we have seen uh, that it, at this time of the uh, year, there is a lot of fog around the uh, borders, and particularly in Jammu sector, and the infiltrators, uh, many of them, uh, smugglers, not only militants, they uh, do try to cross over to this side of the border in Jammu, and in Kashmir division as well, we see that at this time of the time, when the uh, infiltration routes are free of snow, and the right. water level in the rivers is very low, the militants do try to cross over to this side. All right, Arish, we'll keep an eye on the developments in the Jammu and Kashmir, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir.